Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Mass. This is Natalie McClutchy and you're watching part three of our four part series on annuities. In this video, our focus is on calculating present value of annuities. It's a little bit of a mind bending sort of um, topic to begin with because we're gonna look at what a present value of an annuity is. And then once we've got our head around that, we're gonna follow up by calculating with some worked examples using the formula and the table. So I hope you've got that thinking cap on, your calculator and your pen handy. Let's get started by talking about what the present value of an annuity is. Now we've looked at present values of normal investments and loans using compound interest formula. And that was the principal, the amount that was initially borrowed or the amount that was initially invested. Well, annuity, as you know already, is different. An annuity is where we're investing the same amount of money over a period of time, and then we let that compound at different um, periods of time for each payment and then at the end we've got a large amount, our future value. Well the present value is what would I have to invest as a single lump sum as an equivalent to get to the same end result. It's going to be compounded for the same period of time, it's going to be same interest rate and same future value. We're just going to have a different starting position. So let's think about that as an example. If I was to invest $1,000 every year for 10 years compounding at 10%, I've invested 10 times 10, $10,000 basically. So if I was to invest that for $10,000 and I used my future value formula, I would be able to work out it's gonna come to roughly $16,000. So that um, annuity has actually earned me $6,000 in compound interest. Well, what would be the amount if I didn't wanna use an annuity but just to use a simple lump sum at the beginning and just leave it there? What would that amount have to be? So that's what we're going to be working out now. So our formula for present value of an annuity is not on the QCAA formula sheet and this will be a disappointment to most of us. However, it's not that hard to remember. Here it is. Now, some of my classes had a bit of a fright when they saw this particular formula and said, how am I supposed to remember that? That is revolting. Well, think about the formula that actually is on your um, QCAA formula sheet. It's the annuities one up the top. And there's not a lot of difference between that formula and the present value formula. Obviously the subject of both formulas is different. One's finding future value and the other's finding present value. The only other change is that the denominator for the present value formula has one plus i to the power of n multiplied by i on the denominator. So if you just remember that that's on the top and the bottom, then you'll be fine. Let's do this with a worked example. Now, if you recall a moment ago, I gave an example of $1,000 invested every year for 10 years at 10%. We found that the future value, using the future value formula, was about $16,000. So let's find out how much we'd have to invest for this same thing as a lump sum. So starting by writing the formula. Now, one thing I'm going to say about this formula is it's a really good idea to use the brackets function on your calculator. If you try and just enter all of this in without using brackets, you're going to make an absolute mess of this particular type of question. Your calculator doesn't think like the human brain does in terms of order of operations, so you need to instruct it with your brackets what to do first and what to do when. So we're going to state our variables. I've kept these fairly simple in this case. We're going to substitute that into the formula and then it's a really good idea to evaluate this slowly. So I've evaluated 1 plus 0 0.01 to the power of 10, that comes to 2.59. I've got that on the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to work that out. Whatever's in brackets comes to 6.1445. You could actually do a second step in between there to show that the top will be 1.59 and that the bottom will be 0.25 and then you're gonna work that out to get the uh, present value of that particular calculation is about $6,000. So what that's saying is, is that instead of putting in $1,000 every year for 10 years, you could have just put $6,000 in the bank and left it alone for 10 years and you would have had the same result. It would have given you an extra $4,000 to spend in the meantime. So you might be asking yourself, well, why would you use an annuity at all? Well, the reason why we use annuities is that not everybody is good at saving. And sometimes when you get $6,000 in the bank, you get very excited and you take yourself on a holiday overseas, which is what I usually do, and you spend a whole lot of money on shoes. So it's not a good idea to do that. So that's why we encourage this regular saving with an annuity. Now, I've also been quite naughty here and I've left step five off because the slide ran out of space. Step five would be to write a statement, very important, usually worth half a mark. And my statement would be is that the present value of this annuity is $6,000 and I wouldn't be rounding that, I'd give the exact amount. Now, a good 
way to check that you've done the right thing is first of all with logic. $6,000 should be less than what you, you would actually put in if you were going to be using an annuity. Remember I said 10 payments, 10 years would be $10,000 that you've chipped away into that account. Well, yes, you would need to make sure that the present value of your annuity is less than the $10,000. That's always going to be the case. So that's first of all, I've done my logic check. You could also check this with a spreadsheet. And I always say to my students that it's a really good idea if you're not sure if you're using your calculator correctly, is to put it in stages in different cells and let it work out little by little by little. And then you can compare that on your calculator so that you get comfortable using your calculator the correct way. The third way that you can check is to use your original compound interest formula. Because technically speaking now, if I was to invest this $6,000 for 10 years at 10%, I should end up with the same future value as that annuity. So let's check that now. I'm going to substitute it into the formula and I'm going to work that through and I've come to $15,937.17. Now that's about 25 cents out. You might be asking yourself, why is that out? That should be exactly the same, shouldn't it? If I was to do this correctly? Well, the answer is rounding. So if you remember on the previous slide, I'd actually rounded that to two decimal places and then we've taken that round answer and we've now raised things to the power of 10 and we've multiplied it by that and that has a bit of an impact and about 25 cents rounding effect there. So you just need to be aware of that, that sometimes rounding can be the factor and if you've rounded to 10 decimal places on your calculator or 30 in an Excel spreadsheet, there will be a difference. Let's look at a slightly more complex question. This one here is a $400 annuity monthly for 12 years 18% per annum. The main complexity here is that we've now got uh, different variables. We're going to have to transform our interest rate to a monthly rate. We're going to have to transform our power of N to a um, monthly period as well. So we've got 144 periods. That's some really big powers going on there. So let's substitute that into the formula and work that through on our calculator and doing that in small steps here. And then at the very end, we're going to find that the present value of that particular investment was $23,541.61. So you could test, once again, test that for logic. Do $400, $400 of payments, there's 144 of them, multiply that out. What you should end up with is a smaller amount for your present value here. We're also going to quickly look at how to calculate present value using a table. On my previous video, we did this with future value. So once again, I'm going to be looking at $500 invested every year for seven years at 8% per annum. So we simply find on the table our seven year period, our 8%, and we basically are going to bring our fingers together and find that the value we're looking for, this is the value of um, the present value of $1 and it's $5.20 one cents with a few decimal places there. So now we're going to multiply that by 500 and we find that the present value of $500 in that annuity is $2,600. So once again we can check that for logic. We've got seven years, we've got $500, that comes to $3,500 worth of a future value for that investment and then plus compound interest. So yes, I would expect that the lump sum that I would have to contribute would be less than that. So that's $2,600. Well, that's all we've had time for today. Please join me for part four where we finish our series and talk about perpetuities. Thank you.